Ever wondered why a crossword puzzle seems easier later in the day? This curious observation might have more to it than meets the eye. Enter Rupert Sheldrake, a Cambridge-trained botanist, who offers a tantalising explanation through his theory of morphic resonance. Sheldrake's theory proposes a fascinating concept. As people across the world successfully fill out their crossword puzzles, these achievements resonate through what he calls a cultural morphic field. Imagine it as a vast, invisible network humming with the collective intellectual triumphs of the day. So, when you sit down with your crossword in the evening, you might be tapping into the successes of countless others, making your task seem somewhat easier. It's a daring idea, one that suggests our individual actions could ripple out, influencing others in ways we might never have imagined. If this theory holds true, then we're all more connected than we might think. But what exactly is morphic resonance, you may ask? Well, to put it simply, it's a theory that suggests every kind, every species, and even every molecule carries a sort of memory from its past. This memory is not stored within any physical part of the entity, but rather it's embedded in a sort of invisible field that permeates and connects everything. Rupert Sheldrake, a botanist by training and a philosopher by calling, coined this term and proposed this theory. According to him, these invisible fields, or morphic fields as he calls them, carry information and resonate with similar entities, allowing them to inherit a collective memory from all previous things of their kind. Let's take the example of a termite colony. Each termite doesn't have a blueprint of the complex structure they need to build, yet they all work in unison, building intricate mazes and chambers. Sheldrake's theory of morphic resonance suggests that these termites are able to build such complex structures because they carry a collective memory from all previous termite colonies. It's like they have a shared database they can tap into, which guides their actions. Or consider pigeons. How do they always find their way back home from hundreds of miles away? According to Sheldrake, it's because they tap into the morphic resonance of their species using the collective memory of all pigeons who have flown before them to navigate their way. The same goes for orchid plants or insulin molecules or anything else for that matter. Sheldrake believes that things are as they are because they were as they were. It's as if the past has left an echo and that echo shapes the present and future of all things. Of course, this is a simplified explanation of a complex and controversial theory that challenges many established scientific paradigms. It's a theory that invites us to think differently about the world and our place in it. That's morphic resonance in a nutshell, the echo of the past shaping the present. Well, morphic resonance is more than just an abstract concept. It's a theory that attempts to explain phenomena that are often brushed off as mere coincidences or dismissed as unscientific. Take the curious case of phantom limbs, for instance. Some people who have lost a limb report still feeling sensations from the missing limb. Could this be a result of morphic resonance? Is there a field of information still resonating with the memory of the limb? And what about our furry friends? Many dog owners swear that their pets know exactly when they're about to come home. Is it possible that the dogs are tapping into some sort of collective canine memory? A morphic resonance of owners returning home. However, like any theory that pushes the boundaries of our understanding, morphic resonance has not been without its share of controversy. Critics argue that the evidence supporting the theory is unreliable at best. They point out that the trials conducted by Rupert Sheldrake relied on people who downloaded an experimental protocol from his website. This means we have no way of knowing whether these amateur experimenters controlled for all possible variables or whether their own biases influenced the results. Psychologists have also taken issue with the theory, particularly when it comes to the claim that people can sense when they're being stared at. They suggest that this may simply be a reverse self-fulfilling prophecy. A person suspects they're being stared at, turns to check, and their movement attracts the attention of others, who then look at them, confirming their original feeling of being stared at. The debate around morphic resonance is a testament to the dynamic nature of scientific inquiry. It's a reminder that our understanding of the world is constantly evolving, enriched by new perspectives and challenged by contentious theories. While morphic resonance remains a contentious theory, it certainly gives us food for thought. Next time you're doing a crossword puzzle, remember you might not be solving it alone.